In the previous section, you learned the best practice and went through the workflow of capturing an RTI dataset. In this presentation, I'm going to guide you step by step through the different stages of RTI processing using the RTI Builder. I will demonstrate the RTI Builder using captured images of a coin. If you want to also do it along with me, I have included a link to the files under useful sources on the page. The first thing to do is to give a name to your project. Naming conventions are important, especially if you end up producing tens or even hundreds of RTI files. Ask yourself, if I give it that name, am I going to find it in a folder with 30 more RTI files without having to open the files? If the answer is yes, then probably it's not a bad project name. And remember that the project name should not have any spaces. Then you should select the fitter to be used for processing your images. You have two options for the highlight based. The hemispherical harmonics fitter and the polynomial texture maps fitter. I went through this earlier in the page. For now, you should select the PTM fitter. Now you're ready to start a new project. First, you should point to the folders where your images are located. Click Open Folder and select the right folder. Remember that there should be no spaces at any part of the folder structure. If you were successful, you should see a loading images progress bar. And shortly after, you will see your dataset loaded. Here, you can remove any images you may not want to use by selecting an image, noting the reason for uh, removal, for example, if it's blurry, uh, and then click Next. Here, you have to select the color of the reflective sphere you used, black or red. In our case, we have used the silver one. Although it's not on the drop-down list, you can select black. Now, you have to indicate where the reflective sphere is located in its image. Select one of the two spheres. It doesn't matter which of the two. Hold the left mouse button and drag your cursor. This will create a green rectangle to enclose the sphere. It doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. Once you are happy with your selection, click Add Area. The rectangle will turn into red. You can use the handles at the four corners to make it fit better around the sphere. Once you are done, click Detect Spheres. Based on your selection, the software will go through all your images to detect the reflective spheres. Once the progress is completed, you will see an image similar to this. This indicates the location of your sphere. Click one of the images, for example the first one on the left, and try to adjust the red circle around your reflective sphere. You can use the handle on the right to make the circle smaller or bigger, and the cross in the middle to move the circle. By moving the image scale slider on the bottom left corner of your window, you can resize the image to make the adjustment of the selection easier. Once you are happy with the selection, make sure to click Set New Center. Then press Next. The last step is the detection of highlights on the reflective spheres. In other words, the software will go through your image to identify the reflection on its sphere and consequently the direction of the light source in its picture. Click Highlight Detection. If you click around your images, you will see that all highlights have been identified. There's a small red cross over its reflection. And we're almost done. This is the last step of the process. Here you may decide to crop your image, for example, leaving out of the final image the reflective spheres or any other unnecessary information. Tick the Use Crop box and from the top-down menu, select a rectangular or free-form cropping style. Click your left mouse button and create the area to be cropped for the final image. As you remember, on the very first stage we selected the PTM fitter. As we noted earlier on this lesson, contrary to the hemispherical harmonics fitter which is part of the RTI builder, the PTM fitter needs to be downloaded and added separately to the software. First, you have to download it from this link. Select the Mac or Windows version as appropriate. Once downloaded, you need to add it to your RTI Builder folder. 
find the folder where the RGI Builder has been installed. Open the subfolder Fitters and add the PTM Fitter there. Once done, go to the PTM Fitter location bar on the top right of your window and make sure to point to the location of the PTM Fitter. If you did that correctly, you are ready to continue. Click Execute and wait. You will see on the top right window that the PTM file is being processed. It may take a couple of minutes depending on the amount of images you have used. If everything went fine, you should see a fitting completed message. This is the stage where any problem might occur. It's not unusual to get an unknown error message. If this is the case, you need to make sure that your file and folder names do not have any spaces. Also, you may need to update your Java. For any other issues, you should also consult the Cultural Heritage Imaging Forum. If you go back to your project folder, you will see that three more folders have been added. The final PTM file is under the folder Finished Files. Congratulations, you created your first highlight RTI file. In the following pages, you will learn how to view any RTI files you have created. Good luck! Thank you.